Hello there everyone, Ashen Flash here and welcome on into a early review for the LEGO Lord of the Rings Rivendell set. This is set number 10316. It has 6,167 pieces making this the largest set in my personal collection and retails for $499.99 USD or $669.99 Canadian. This will become available beginning on March the 5th for VIP members. But if you're not a VIP member, which it just takes a few seconds to become one, you'll have to wait until March the 8th. If you're a VIP member purchasing it between the 5th to the 7th, you will also get the Frodo and Gollum brickheads for free included, which sort of, I guess, gives you a bit of a discount on the set in a way. Now, this was sent to me early by Lego and Land to do a review for, and I had the privilege of being in Denmark with a room full of other Lego fans when this set was revealed. And the excitement in that room, as well as just online for Lord of the Rings to return after almost 10 years is just huge right now. There's a total of 15 minifigures here in this set, not including the statues that are also included throughout the set. The build is actually able to be separated into three separate sections, and in the different sections, there's also different spots that you can remove. Like I said before, this is the largest set in my collection, and it is worth every single penny. You're going to see some incredible building techniques, incredible minifigures, the size and scale of this, the detail, the stickers and references in here. There's so much to go through if you want to hop around to the different sections. Like you just saw, there are three sections, so you can find that all down below in different chapters. Let's go ahead and let's take a closer look at the first section. Which leads us on over here to the entranceway of the first section. Really love the stairs leading on up into this gorgeous archway. The pieces there used and angled to create that is just incredible. How it's even in like the second floor there, like that looks so great. You're gonna see throughout the whole thing, a ton of greenery and leaves and different things throughout the whole set that is connected and just how some of the builds, like look at the masonry bricks there with these parts, looks great. You've got five statues, the ones furthest away use the dress pieces, the rest use the regular minifigure legs. And we're going to take a closer look at them here. So here's the statue up close. Got a really detailed torso. I like the specs that they've got to sort of give it that stone texture. The face is sort of a smile. You'll see why I say that when I remove the hair and spin it around. You've got an upset expression. Again, look at the back torso printing. Very, very cool. The specs and everything, the detail. And this is what the one with the dress looks like. No printing on the dress or the back of the dress. And then you've also got the other one with the different hair piece there, the Elizabeth Swan hair there in light gray. Small little mistake that I'm sure I'll get comments about that you might have noticed is I put the statues in the wrong order. You're supposed to alternate the hair pieces here as you go through. And then back on over here to the front, you can see we've got a brand new element that is introduced for 2023. Looks great with the leaves, really like that. Now you're probably wondering what's with this? Well, this is sort of our first play feature before of course splitting it off into three different sections. This is meant to be the little hiding hole that Sam is hiding inside of to eavesdrop in on the meeting. So what you do is you take the figure and you slide him on inside and you just drop the leaves there and then to remove that there to have him pop on out all you got to do is remove him really easily just like that and speaking of removing i didn't show but this is actually how the statues are attached so the three with the legs are attached like that and then this one here of course it's just the dress and it sits on inside there like that moving on over here this is the first section here on the first floor you can see the different spots that you can connect the uh, buildings and different sections in love the bookshelf really detailed i love how that looks and the detail here as well for like the candle holders wow remarkable some of the part usages there you've also got this little bench which is very easy to remove i like the little carpeting underneath and then it attaches of course with that transparent piece and you've got like some cushions on top this build is repeated somewhere else in the set so here's the second floor technically speaking there is a way to get up here from the middle section but we'll take a closer look at that in a bit but this is the part that is called frodo's room 
and you'll see it sort of doubles as two different rooms. Here we have this gorgeous bed there. I love the stickers for the bedding as well as like the elf, how there is a sticker there that has it like a part of the backboard of the bed. Looks great. I also love if you pay attention here to the bottom, how they've done the legs for the bed. I think that's very unique. Really love the back part there with the candle. Same sort of similar build from before, as well as you've got a little bench there, as well as a seat, which you could move on over. So while you can put Frodo there lying in bed, and of course Gandalf standing by his side waking up, included in the set for the very first time are official builds for seated minifigure short legs as well as a dress there so you could see that the print from gandalf's dress piece before is actually on this slope build to have him sitting on different spots same there for frodo which we'll circle back to later on when we have them sitting in the council and speaking of sitting there's actually a spot over here for Bilbo to be writing his book, which you can, of course, also have him sitting on the chair. You've got the quill there on the one side, and then, of course, the book, which the book can be detached there. And just to remove this here so you could see the little stand, you've got a couple of different candles there as well to light up his workspace, like the simplicity there for the build of the desk. And then this is what the seat looks like there that he was sitting on. And again, just like Frodo, you've got parts for his legs to be sitting. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the chest that was included in the room. And inside are a couple of presents here from Bilbo. Included is actually this 2x2 two two tile, which unfortunately is a sticker, not a print, of the mithril there that he gives to Frodo, as well as included inside here that fits, is also the sword sting. Throughout the set, you'll see a couple of different elements and pieces you've never seen before, like sting here. And they actually all come inside of this little baggie, which they've done that before for superheroes and Ninjago. Now on the other side of the wall where Frodo's bed is, you've got this little painting. And gorgeous little pieces there and to create this pattern looks great but this has to be my favorite reference in the set this gorgeous sticker here of Isildur with the broken sword as well as Sauron with just in minifigure form looks incredible with all those new pieces potentially hinting at a future figure I hope and it's not one we've ever gotten before. I think this could make an excellent 18 plus set. Just the two of them there in a set would love to see that happen. Now here on this section of the roof on the end, you've got this little arch that's seen on the middle section, as well as you can see from the side, they've even gone ahead and just sort of covered up a bit there, which looks great. I also love the rail there that they've got from the outside. I didn't really talk about the top of the tower, but it's very detailed. I don't really like how you could see some of the studs with the holes in them underneath that part there, but I really love the shaping and just some of the parts they've used to make the roundness. It's completely uh, empty on the inside there. I wouldn't risk putting a figure in there. It's gonna be really tough to get out. I love the little car parts there being used for the arches of this and just how the bricks and everything wrap around. It's just a really cool looking part there that adds on to the tower. Now the roof. I know that I've seen a ton of comments saying that seems so boring and daunting. Now I personally, that was one of the highlights for me building the set. I thoroughly enjoyed it. There's actually just something so satisfying when you're placing all these tiles there. There's a technique that you actually take a large piece and you could see here, you angle them to all be at 45 degrees. And the finished product here is just incredible. I really love the pattern as well that they've created there with the different colors and the lines and everything. Of course, this continues on into the middle section here. And just look at that, how the tiles line up there. It looks incredible. Just to show you here the connection points from this side, it doesn't really connect. It's just a loose connection there to hold it very 
loosely in place there. And uh, again, down below, you've got the tan little connectors being used rather than these black ones or other colors that are a lot more permanent, like with other modulars. Now you might be wondering why we're looking through the archway here. Well, that's because I could have this gorgeous mural be a part of the little study section there, which I obviously am gonna show you here with better lighting and detail. Look at that. I love the detail here. The graphic designer Ashwin did an incredible job with that. Love the archway here as well between the two sections, how that also hangs over a little bit of the floor from the first section. And through that archway here leads us into this main sort of it's also a studies look at the gorgeous tiling here 100 percent. whatever the modular is for 2024 this piece is going to be inside there this two by two piece is repeated all throughout this floor you've even got some really cool little nexo night shield ones there that are on an angle as well as these pieces there that act as like the sort of ends there to the tip of the star pattern incredible gorgeous it was a little time consuming and to actually make sure that you have them all going the right way but the final product here it, it's incredible i love this candle holder piece here love the design of that really great also love the arches the designs here look great uh, you've got a couple of different tables, some really simple ones with some candles and chalices there. And same with the ones in behind there if it decides to focus. There we go. We've got a little candle stand that was the same on the second floor from the first section. And now on these little desks, we've got a ton of references. This one appears to have some sort of a lake there and arrows or something. Not really too sure about that, but a ton of writing and scribbles. And then over on this desk, we've got this other little map there of Mordor with the Tower of Baradur, which just looks so cool with the Eye of Sauron on top. And then over here, we've got this map of Middle Earth, which looks so, so cool cool i really hope that we get every little location here i know that it doesn't make sense for the tower of orthanc to be so close to the other tower but they wanted to make sure that they included a bunch of the iconic locations here that were important uh, but one thing that is accurate is having Minas Tirith there across the river which i think looks really cool the little spot there and then up above that that is actually a small version of rivendale and i guess that's a little legend there and you got a compass up at the top incredible you may notice over here we've actually got some stairs leading up to a platform so here's that second platform and you can see we've got a telescope which is so detailed i love that build really gorgeous i love the pearlescent piece there on the end for the lens i think that looks really great and again that platform continues all the way out into this second gazebo which you can see here how that connects and goes on out into the front part but it really just shows how much they thought this through the whole architecture and design how they were going to connect everything here coming back over here we've got the stairwell that continues on up into the second floor which has a really cool little again the same sort of design for the railing that allows you to look on down onto the study but the main centerpiece for this section is this statue and sort of podium is meant to be holding the shards of narsil you actually get two of the broken swords there and that is just such an incredible piece that they have designed here for this and the fact that this statue can hold it but that's not all with the statue you can actually even remove this entire section here because of its importance you can go ahead and remove it and you can have that on its own little display as well you can see how that connects there up above we've got this four by four plate with this sticker on it of ost in ideal and i don't know if i said that properly probably didn't but anyways that is a really cool sticker which has been ripped directly from an actual painting looks great and then over here on this side we've got this legoized painting of one of the elven ships now technically still inside of the main study we've got this banner hanging on the wall really love that sticker and design 
Now, besides the tiling on the roof, this is my favorite section here. The outside is just gorgeous. The Council of Elrond here. The fact that, like, I had that classic old set, there's now this incredible build section here with this huge tree and even the archway here. Like, that, this is one of my favorite building techniques. Like, this is just one of the, the greatest builds I think we've ever gotten in a set. The angles that they've created here to make that work and line up, how it's even connected in the wall there in the back. The arches and the horns and the different vine pieces it's incredible the cupcake parts like the candlesticks there phenomenal absolutely incredible now the council section is actually up pretty high here you've got a ton of different greenery here even just i love the olive green and the uh, different dark tan bricks being used and to shape this all out you even got uh, a bit of that tree the vines coming out here at the bottom over this little small bridge it's even dropping some leaves here all around now the main council section here what is amazing about this is they designed it so that you can actually go ahead and completely remove it and lift it up. This is an incredible idea to have this removable, to have this gorgeous tree with all these different colors looks so, so cool. I love just all of the different roots and how they've got that going on up through this, the different colors that they've got going, even some of the leaves, like a hole there in the trunk of the tree. It's incredible, really, really awesome. But down below, is probably one of the coolest builds here. So here it is up close, the Council of Elrond with all these different parts here being recolored for the first time. I'm not sure, maybe we've gotten popsicle pieces before in a solid color and not transparent, but it's very cool here to see for the first time in this color medium nougat. Also the hot dog sausage pieces there as well looks great. We've got the return of those printed tiles from the main study looks great there making that same shape and everything Elrond has a very special chair there in teal which is one of the designers uh, favorite colors also this stand here in the center you might be wondering what are those pieces that they used you might be wondering what are the pieces that they used to make this well that's actually a piece created for minecraft recolored here in tan and they've stacked them on top of each other so that they can make this incredible little shape so that you've got the stand for frodo to go and place the ring on really really cool but let's populate this shall we with everyone that was sitting in on that meeting so there we go. I think I've put everyone in the proper order that they appear in the film, all sitting around the ring at the council meeting. Really cool that they've included all those dress pieces. Again, the leg builds for Frodo to be sitting in on this meeting on the chairs. And of course, that iconic face there for Boromir, which we'll see in a bit. And underneath, you've got the Eye of Sauron built there, which is really cool because that's meant to represent sort of like when Gimli goes to destroy the ring and he hits it and that flash appears on screen in Frodo's head. And behind where the tree sits, you could see a couple different vines. You've also got some small mushrooms there that even glow in the dark. I truly just cannot get enough of the roofing and the tiling here. You can even see it carries on over onto this small gazebo. And then this tree is probably my least favorite part of the set, not because I don't like its look or anything. It was the most tedious part to build over the rest of this. It was just very time consuming. You've got a little bit of this cool little tower bit as well as that same end piece there on the end of this roof section. And then over here on this side, again, same sort of covering that was on the other section, and that's what the other side of the gazebo looks like. Now, we didn't talk about this before, but I really love the build here for the pillars of this gazebo. Love that a lot. There on the table, you've got the lamboss bread, which looks great on the table. 
and then you can come this way to lead you into the third section but before we do that over here in the back part we've actually got some steps leading on down into this other little spot which you can sit some figures there on that little bench and you've got the smallest tree here in the entire set Anyways, so here you'll notice that the third section is actually on an angle when you attach it to the front part. You can see how it's flat here and then goes on a bit of an angle this way. So here is the third and final section of Rivendell. And I gotta say, it's really gorgeous, this one. I feel like it's got the most sort of environment section and you could just see just so many different things here, so many different types of... Uh, nature growing, fungus, different types of mushrooms. You've got all the trees and the roots and all of the different plants sprouting out of the ground. And there's just so much little minute details here that I'm going to point out to you. First things first, I want to show you where all the mushrooms are. Turning off all the lights, you could see as I spin this thing back around, there's so many mushrooms here in this section. There's little secret ones in behind the waterfall spots here that you're seeing right now as well. Anyways, continuing our way through our journey and walk through of Rivendell, through the second section here up onto this bridge that iconic shot of them walking over that huge bridge obviously can't fit the entire fellowship there but it does allow you to put figures all throughout this there even on the center part of the bridge having them walk across that i love the waterfall effect here the build that they've created looks great even the water how reflective and clear it is love that love the splash or maybe like the mist coming up from where the water is hitting the water down below love that a lot all the plants just the shaping of like this part here is incredible so so detailed if I spin this around here onto the back, you can see those secret mushrooms that I was just talking about. There's even a little frog piece included there. And then we're going to continue through, though, our little journey. If you continue, you've got all these different new pieces there coming out of that rock. You can go either up or down. Let's go on up to this top gazebo. This top gazebo is arguably one of the most beautiful parts of this set. And it also is where some like iconic moments between Arwen and Aragorn take place. So it's great that you can actually remove this just like the council section and you could remove it and sort of display it on its own. But that also gives you access to down below. Like look at this gazebo. It's just gorgeous. All the different like spiral pieces up top there, the life preserver pieces being used, all the horns on top. Like, that's just remarkable. This is one of the most beautiful sets of all time, and this is adding to that. You've got that same little uh, bench bed, day bed, I guess, that I was talking about before with the pillows. And again, like I said before, this is meant to actually be removable, so you can have, like, those flashbacks between the two of them here. So making our way down these steps, love how they are on this curved angle. Love that a lot. And then over here... This tree is just gorgeous. Love the mushrooms there, by the way, as well. And just how it's even got some mushrooms growing out of the tree. Really great. This tree's design is the exact same. You'll see the leaf patterns and everything. Very similar to how the one in the back is. But I love the colors that they chose here for this. The leaf pieces there in sand green look great. And then this tree, it's got the autumn colors there. Really incredible. This whole shape of this tree it's just so, so detailed, all the branches there. But my favorite part is how it's got all the roots growing out of this whole mound of like earth or whatever, like the gazebo sitting on top of. I think that looks so cool there, really incredible. Which you could see even here, you've got uh, some spots there, some roots growing out there. Again, a little mushroom there. You've got an anvil. They're reassembling there the shards of Narsil, making it whole again. You've got a couple of different tools, either to work on the different weapons that they're making here, or even the sh shovel there to stoke the fire. Yes, there is actually a fire inside there, that furnace. Love the design, the archway there. And the arch there from the fireplace is very similar to the archway into the underground section. 
So the armory here is very cool. It's very simple in its design and what we've got going on. We've got uh, a sword, again, being sharpened there. We've got the stone cutter that can actually turn. Got a lantern just like there was one on the outside, as well as these weapon racks. The weapon racks are actually completely removable here, and you're able to store a ton of the extra pieces here that you get. You can see all of these are extras. You've even got these incredible elven swords, which just look so cool. I love those pieces there. You got four in total. Let's start with Bilbo Baggins, shall we? This figure, we've never gotten an old Bilbo before. This is the very first time. Love the dual molded legs there, how we can have the hobbit feet showing. You've even got the book, which looks great. I love the cover of the book. You've even got the letter B there initialed and you could open it up and it says there and back again. The torso printing is really great. Love that a lot. The face, I think they did well. Even the hairpiece choice is great. You've got the walking stick for him, but probably the thing that people are most excited about. The second face here, the creepy face. Look at that. I love how they decided to include that. So iconic and important to have. Very creepy when I was a kid. Now we've got in Lego form here. And I didn't show this before, but this is how their legs are built for when the hobbits are sitting. So you just take them there and you can go ahead and sit them on down anywhere you'd like. First ever time in a Lego set. Here is Frodo and looks great. Love the dual molded legs again. They, I think that adds so much to the Hobbits. Really awesome. I never had this figure before. Really love it. You got the one ring as well as Sting here in his hand. The hair, they have it here in dark brown as well as you got a regular face for him. And on the back, you could see the face that he makes when he puts on the ring. Lifting up the cape, you could see what the back torso printing looks like there. Next up here, we have Samwise, and I love everything but the hair. I really do not agree with this hair choice that they've done for him, but he's got the frying pan. Really love the torso printing, the face. I think they really nailed that. Moving the hair there, if I spin it around, you could see he's got this sort of a generic expression. And lifting up the cape, you could see what the back torso printing looks like there. And here is Mary, and I don't know if it's because of the old lego lord of the Rings sets but i feel like they swapped sam and his hair it's wrong for this set but regardless i'm probably going to change it myself love the broken carrot i think that's hilarious ex to include as his accessory love the face there captured it perfectly moving the hair you could see he's got this awesome smirk there and lifting up the cape you could see the back torso and here's pippin again with the bread on the leaves <laughs> great to have three i guess in the set and then you've got a really detailed torso. Love the scarf, the jacket, and everything. Love the face for him. And spinning it around here on the back, you've got this concerned expression. And lifting up the cape, you can see you've got a bit of the scarf coming on to the back torso printing. And here is Gandalf the Grey. Awesome to have dress printing here. We didn't have that before. I really love the new dress piece there too. We've even got printing there on the back, which is awesome. Love the cape. That's actually a brand new piece for him. They brought back his beard as well as the dark gray wizard hat there. You've also got uh, one of the smaller swords there and his staff. Removing all that, you could see the torso printing better as well as the front of his dress. And then on the back, you've got like a hood as well as some back printing there. Really think that the face they chose, even though it's a reuse, I think it works well. You can see what the cape looks like for him, that new piece that I was talking about. And just to compare here, this is what the sitting dress piece looks like. I love that. So unnecessary that they did that, but incredible. And also included for him is the Dumbledore hair there in light gray. Again, same thing from the statues, but awesome inclusion. Here's Legolas. Love the dual molded legs. That's not something that was done back then when the theme came out. So awesome to see here. We've got our first elvish hair there, which uh, is a brand new piece introduced. It's used in for the dark brown hair as well in the set. What's interesting about it is it's actually dual molded. So it, it wasn't like that before. So you've got uh, dual molding there of the flesh color as well as the hair color. The face is Han Solo's from Solo. 
I don't think that works for him at all. You've got the bow, which is really cool, the more detailed and fancy bow. But removing that there, you get a better look at the torso printing as well as the back torso printing and the second face. Got a bit of a misprint there on my face, unfortunately. And here is Gimli, and this is a brand new helmet piece for him here. You can see the old version and just how different it is in terms of the color, even just the shaping. It's a lot shorter, which looks great with the beard. Incredible love the axes and how you could actually have him holding it at the top. Really awesome. Love all the printing, the copper printing on the helmet. Incredible. Removing that, also included, you might have noticed when he was sitting down at the council, you've even got the Dumbledore hair there in dark orange, which looks so great, really accurate to the scene. So happy they decided to include that there. And you'll also notice that he's got mid legs this time around and not the short legs because mid legs didn't exist back then. That allows dwarves to be a little bit taller than hobbits, which is an awesome little detail. And here's what the face looks like, as well as the torso printing. Unfortunately, no second face print this time around, but you've even got some cool back printing. Gloian is also included, which looks great. Love the white beard as well as the hair in white. And the face underneath, I did a search for the part and nothing came up. So I don't know where this is being used, but the torso, however, that's Owens from Jurassic World. Weird to see that here in a Lord of the Rings set. No back head printing there, but that's what the back torso printing looks like. And here is Boromir. I love this figure, so awesome. I really think that the fact that they're including meme faces inside of sets now is just awesome. Like the fact that we've got the one does not simply walk into Mordor specifically here for this face. Wow, love the shield print, very great. The sword there being used for him as well. Removing all that, you get a better look there at the torso and leg printing. And then on the back, you've got a torso continued and love the face that he's got there as well. And here is Aragorn, very detailed torso and leg printing. Great detailing there, how that continues down to the bottom. The sword is awesome looking. Love that new piece created here from that bag. You got some back torso printing. And removing the hair, you can see he's gone to this second face, which is a little bit angry, maybe while he's fighting. And here's Arwen. Face? Nah. Would really love for her to get an exclusive face. It's a huge set. Come on, don't reuse faces for someone as important as her. The dress, though, very detailed, really great. I loved it a lot. The book that she's reading, nothing special. Actually, inside, you've got a one by two tile from Harry Potter, which is very interesting. The hair, I like it in dark brown. I think it works for some characters and not others. But here's what the torso looks like there as well without the hair covering it up. And then the back torso, great. She's even got this smile. And here's Elrond, one of my favorite figures in the set. Always loved. And here's Elrond, love his outfit here. Always loved it, maybe because it's in dark red, but uh, like the copper there in uh, the torso and down into the dress. Got this little smile as well as, unlike before, instead of having a crown or whatever be molded into the hair, it's printed onto his face. And then on the back, he's got this sort of upset expression and some back torso printing, no back dress printing. And just to compare side by side there, look at that, awesome. That means our final two figures are just the two generic elves included, which you've got a torso there, which is reused for both of them. Very detailed, very elvish-like. Got a dress there with some printing to continue that on down. The face is a reuse as well, same with the hair piece. The back of the dress has printing. I don't know why they went ahead and did that for this generic figure, but not for like Alrond or, I don't know. Don't know how I feel about that. Removing the hair, you can see the back torso printing as well as that angry expression. And that's what the torso looks like without the hair covering it. Then you've got this male elf. This face has been used for so many people now at this point, but uh, removing it here, you could see spinning it around. You've got this angry expression. Maybe that's from him hitting the hammer on the sword, reforging it. 
And here are the instruction manuals. There's three of them for each different sections. You've got uh, these little leaves up at the top marking the different ones. So this one here, you can see it's a little bit more highlighted and detailed for the section you're working on. And then the second instructions there. And then the third one you could see is like the middle section. But we're gonna focus in on the first instructions because that's what's got all the interesting information. And obviously there's little tidbits throughout the entire thing, but this features the Fellowship of Lego Designers. I've never seen a set that features this many people working on one set. Incredible. You could see over here, you've got a reference picture, as well as if you want to pause and read, you can see uh, what they're talking about in each of the different pages. They've even got some of the old sets here featured which is very cool the original council of Elrond there the mines of moria incredible really really regret not picking up that middle one and then uh you could see the tower it goes into the different uh pages all little tidbits inside each of the instructions just waiting for you to read but anyways, everyone, that is my very long review of the Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell set. Incredible, gorgeous set, huge, detailed, just beautiful set that... Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my long review of the Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell set. I am blown away by this. I had to sit on this for so many months and i'm just blown away by finally being able to build this set for myself add this into my collection put this on display this is a very large set that you got to find room for and honestly i have no doubt that we're going to get more of these the fact that just the reception already that this has gotten no doubt that lord of the rings fans are going to show up for this set it's incredible. I cannot wait to see where this theme goes in the future. They said that if this does well, they'll explore that. And I hope that that is the case with this set. But be sure to subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on future LEGO Lord of the Rings news and reviews. I hope they do more Brickheads as well. Add some more. Get the whole fellowship and i would love to do a video talking about some other locations that i'd like to see them do at this scale at this detail so excited for this theme to be back but i hope you guys did enjoy this video hope you all have a great day i will see you all in the next one